That was a very good point. Thank you very much for that, John. Um, <laughs> this, will the poetry do that to me? Versus basketball. Um, anyway, thank you for sharing. Thank you all uh, very much. I, I'm looking for shorter pieces again to be able to share with you. I'm going to share with you one poem from this CCD issue collection book. It's the most recent one from January through April of 2021. It is titled What Lies on the Other Side. Dun dun dun. It's, I'm going to show it without a, a flat, you know, without reflecting or whatever. But anywho, um, I will share with you one poem from this book, and uh, we will see. We'll try this one. And I hope you guys like it. I will not tell you who this was about, but this is called Once Craned My Neck. I know you've joined me all around this country. I, I photographed bison who stopped us from driving when they crossed the road. I know you've been with me through the national parks and down the most congested streets this country has ever known over solidified sands that made ripples in the road. You were with me every time I drove two states away to see my dying best friend. But right now, all I can think about is when I was in Montana driving from one state to the next and there was no speed limit there. So I got to the top of a deserted mountain road on some Sunday morning. I then craned my neck to see if I could see any cops anywhere because I still felt like I was doing something illegal when I floored it until I sped, until the speedometer could no longer count any additional miles. I don't know if you'll ever notice, but I want you to know that even when you cause me problems, you were always there for me. And I'll never forget that you even once saved my life. I just want you to know just how much you've meant to me. And I'll miss you. I, I don't want to count the minutes until we're no longer together. And before we're even separate, I still cry. <laughs> I'll miss you. I miss you already. I'll miss you. Sorry. Got it out of the way. Nice. Thank you. Um, and I won't tell you what that was, you know, because it's fun to leave that open. And I'll have, ah, oh, I've got a new poem that I've never shared. And this one, um, because the open mic that I ran in Chicago was started by somebody else, and he was doing, um, writing down his dreams and having dreams poems. So I thought, why don't I, when I think of something interesting, and I have this one that I just recently had. It was from, oh my God, it was the morning of John's birthday. Um, but it had nothing to do with John. This is called Uncontrollable Car. My guy and I were checking out a, of a grocery store. It was busy, congested, and he said to me that I should get the car. And like a good little soldier, I did. I left the store. It was sunny outside, and as I walked into a large multi-level parking garage, I think a poet friend was leaving the same store before me, but I didn't get a chance to say hi. Now, as I got to my electric car, I saw a family of four packing their minivan next to my car, but their little kids left all sorts of disposable, non-recyclable plastic pieces on top of my car. In the back of my mind, I thought that this is probably just like what every little kid would do. So I stood there and waited. I don't know if my arms were crossed, and as a parent eventually saw me, I said, I was just waiting for all that stuff to be removed from the top of my car. So they feverishly continued grabbing everything and dumping it into their minivan until I stepped inside of my car, stepped inside of my car and turned it on to go. And as I started it up, I pulled away. For some reason, this family was suddenly all in my hybrid with me, like we all knew each other, like we all shared something. So I started moving forward and turning corners to get out of this garage and meet my guy with my precious groceries. And although I pressed the brakes, the car just wouldn't stop. It's not like my car was going insanely fast, but it just wouldn't respond to what I wanted it to do. So the father guy said, what are you doing? And my eyes were like saucers as I pointed to the center console of my car and I said, look, my gear shift no longer says letters like P, R, and D, but numbers one through nine. So I'm trying to explain how this car some, was all somehow beyond my control. 
And as I turned and couldn't stop, this line of cars to leave was parked with a motorcyclist at the end as I approached, just like that day when I was in my Saturn at the end of a long line of cars and someone behind me speeding and texting hit my car and I almost died, but not before I turned the wheels of my car so I wouldn't kill the motorcyclist in front of me. But now I'm stuck in that damn garage and it was like deja vu all over again and this motorcyclist was just stopped right in front of me. I tried to stop, but yeah, I seemed to just skid into that motorcycle wheel instead. Oh. And, and unlike the real world, I was like this motorcycle was just like a bumper car because I just oh. bounced off the back tire, which caused my car to start spinning in the opposite direction. Me and this family of four just spun in my uncontrollable car until it finally slowed down and stopped at a 45 degree angle just short of the corner walls of the garage. I wondered if my guy wondered where I was. And I looked around and I said, well, that was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> that was all there was for that one. And because, <laughs> well, that was unexpected. I've got this family of four in the car with me and I don't know what that was. <laughs> and because I probably have Yes, I see one minute. I'm going to do one more Twitter poem for different elements because when I hear news stories, I found one about, and you guys will like this one because it is all like globally responsible and such or something. This one is called Uranium, Permafrost Saves. Thawed permafrost releases 1,400 gigatons of carbon dioxide, amplifying climate change. Permafrost's historic, uh, historic samples of uranium to decayed thorium show permafrost's instability till 400,000 years ago. Then, post-volcanic mass extinction led to us. So, permafrost saves. It was the strangest thing to hear the story about we trapped permafrost and that they looked at it from global periods and that permafrost existed and then right at that last point for an extinction from volcanic stuff, then it was able to save stuff and then we were able to come into existence on this planet, oh. which is just like, that was the craziest thing I thought. And so, you know, tried to do an Instagram image of my short little poems, but you know, no matter. Anywho, um, I think we're right at the five the five thirty time. So I ah, five thirty one. Oh crap! I had a long Twitter length poem. Sorry about that. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you so much. You're all double plus cool. Um, I the first Sunday in July will be the next one, and uh, as it says on this thing, you can always find it from Scars TV slash Poetic License, or look for a monthly uh, listing for a Facebook event page for coming to a Zoom meeting, and. Thank you guys all, you're all triple plus excellent, and thank you for so much for remaining poetically inclined and staying safe, mm -hmm. and uh, have a wonderful June, you guys. Smooches on you all, and uh, I will see you guys next month. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.